Welcome to the Hoodoo and Chill Podcast, the number one hoodoo and spirituality-based podcast bringing awareness to African-American spirituality and a wide range of thought-provoking topics. I am Papa Seer, your host, your narrator, and your storyteller. Before the show begins, make sure you're subscribed or following the show so you don't miss out on any episodes. And as always, donations of love keep our podcast alive and give us the ability to upgrade the show, enhance our content, and most importantly, do what we love. You can use any link in the description to send your donation of love today. Now, let's start the show. Good morning and grand rising or grand evening, if it happens to be evening, wherever you may be listening, it is me, Papa Seer, the host, narrator, and storyteller of the number one podcast in this genre, the number one hoodoo and spirituality based podcast, the hoodoo and chill podcast. Blessed are the spirits that walk with you. Blessed are the spirits that surround you. Blessed are all of the listeners and supporters who keep us on the charts, who have taken this endeavor to heights that I never would have expected. And I'm really looking forward to see where the Hoodoo and Chill podcast is going to grow and go in the future. We have a very, very, very beautiful episode put together today. But before I get into that, I just wanted to just drop a few words on you all today like I you know I never like to just jump into the message I kind of like to rap with you all for a few minutes and you know break the ice before we get into the meat of any content I put out and I just want to encourage any of you you know I don't care what your passion what your endeavor is go for it you know the Hoodoo and Chill podcast was something that we started on clubhouse it was literally just a conversation that morphed into a global podcast okay and it is a lot of work you know i've had to learn how to edit become basically a studio editor slash producer video editor i mean the whole not everything that you see on the who do and show podcast best believe you need when it comes to the podcast it is one man one band one sound everything else that's going on in the background i do have a team but as it relates to the editing the content the research it is one man one band one sound and i encourage each and every last one of you whatever it is that you are working for whatever your dream your passion you can do it it's available to you it's available for you the doors are open you just have to be the proprietor of your hustle, your hard work, your ambition. Don't let anyone tell you that it cannot materialize, that it cannot manifest. I am telling you today on this Monday, family, friends, you have more than what it takes to be successful at anything that your heart desires. Now, with that being said, Let's jump into today's show. Let's jump into today's content. I was, I had fun putting this together, you know, and honestly, I love shows when I can have fun putting together the material, putting together the script or doing my research. I'm going to be honest, there have been some shows where, you know, just doing the research, whereas it was impactful and resourceful and very much needed, it wasn't fun, you know, like some of these episodes we've really had to discuss some very hard to digest topics but today's episode i can honestly say i had fun just you know dissecting this interview this is a a hoodoo voices um episode so for those of you who are fans of the hoodoo voices series you know this is totally for you today but like i was saying i had fun this particular practitioner that we we are doing the interview on today she didn't provide a name, which is totally fine. She chooses to remain anonymous. Some of my best practitioners from this series have chosen to remain anonymous. But I think her voice, her attitude, her character, like it comes through so 
vividly through the words of her interview that, in my opinion, she doesn't need a name. Her work speaks for itself. Before we get into this practitioner, because this is one of the few interviews where I feel like a backdrop or let's say her backstory wasn't given. You know, I can totally tell from her from her tone in this interview, Hyatt paid her for this information. She came, she delivered, and she left. She didn't really get into too much about who she was. You know, she dropped a few hints about herself, but you would have to be a Sherlock Holmes of hoodoo to pick it up what she dropped. So before we get into the interview today, I want to just offer a few of my own personal opinions on, you know, practitioners from this pra- from this pr- particular region of the South, right? So today's interview hails from Algiers, Louisiana. Some would even basically say New Orleans. And while I am not from Louisiana, definitely been to New Orleans, shout out to New Orleans, love New Orleans. I have to say, I truly have a deep love and respect from for the history, the hoodoo, and the workers that have hailed from this region. I really have to say that I, I truly respect them to the utmost because every interview and if you are an OG of the Hoodoo and Chill podcast, every time we've done an interview a Hoodoo Voices on a practitioner from New Orleans or Louisiana, the interview is so thorough. I mean, it's so thorough. They break down the work. They dissect it. It's very, very detailed. There's a lot of confirmation in the words. So I I really, truly enjoy when we have interviews from practitioners from this region. Not that I favor any region one more than the other. I just notice certain similarities from people that come from these particular regions. And what, what I have to say is that every time we speak to someone from New Orleans or when we get an interview for someone from this region, they are very educated and very detailed as far as the hoodoo is concerned. This woman, I really enjoyed her interview a lot because for me in my own personal practice and my own teachings and things that I put out to the world, for me, I I was excited because there was so much confirmation in her words. I mean, this woman talks about things that are not discussed openly she even makes you question some of the things that you have even been taught you know she offers us benevolent uses of graveyard dirt which i'm so excited to share this with you all today because every time we talk about graveyard dirt in this practice it's always for something negative it's always for something you know um I can't even think of the word uh, malicious, that word, (laughs) you know, but she offers you a working on how the graveyard dirt can be used for something positive. She talks about the use of bay rum a lot in this interview. And that was one thing that had me jumping up and down for joy because I'm a huge proprietor of the use of bay rum to the point where if we're being honest today on this podcast, which we are every time I podcast well, if I'm going to be candid, let me use that word. I don't use Florida water a lot in my personal practice. I have it. Um, but if I run out of it or if I don't have it, it's not a big deal. Personally, I prefer to use Bay Rum. And all of my students, my mentees, I have given them the recipe on how I make Bay Rum. They love it. And a lot of them tend to alleviate the use of Florida water in their practice. And I love Florida water. I think it's great. Personally, I do think it's like sage. It's a little bit overused. I think people rely on it as a crutch. And to just say this openly and candidly on the podcast today, I haven't come across one practitioner 
traditionally who even use Florida water. You know, I, it, it's not that it, I, I'm not saying that you can't use it in hoodoo, but I haven't come across any practitioner who has spoken of using it traditionally. They use other things. And I was just so happy that she kept talking about bay rum because that's something I use a lot. And, you know, I don't deviate from it. I love bay rum. I think that it has many uses. And again, I don't consider myself a stark traditionalist, but there are certain things that I just won't deviate from. Um, there are just certain things that I'm just going to stick to because that's just how the old people did it. So without further ado, Hoodoo Voices is a series dedicated to giving life to the forgotten and many unknown voices of Hoodoo. This series dedicates and showcases interviews conducted by Harry Hyatt Middleton in the 1930s. These interview excerpts are from his extensive five-volume series, Hoodoo, Conjuration, Witchcraft, and Root Work. While we can appreciate this priceless resource of Hoodoo Black history, we here at the Hoodoo and Chill podcast do not support or condone the matter in which this information was gathered and monetized for financial gain. We can, however, acknowledge Mr. Hyatt's extensive work as an essential resource. The Hoodoo and Chill podcast will return after this short ad break. What's up, family? It's Papa Seer, your favorite podcast host of the number one hoodoo-based podcast and spirituality-based podcast wherever you get your podcasts. If you haven't taken the time yet, please make sure that you follow the podcast. If you're listening to us on Apple or wherever you can leave a comment, leave us a five-star rating with a comment that really helps the podcast in more ways than you can believe, and it's totally free. But I just want to remind everyone that while this is free content, the Hoodoo and Chill podcast, we thrive and we survive on donations of love. If you have it, if you feel it in your heart to send us a donation of love, we thank you and we pray that whatever you send, it is reciprocated to you three times over. We want to keep this content alive and we want to promote posting this content more regularly. So again, donations of love keep our podcast alive. Comments, five stars, take us to heights that you wouldn't even believe and we need your love and we need your support. Please use one of the links in the podcast description to send your donation of love and we graciously thank you all for everything that you do to keep the Hoodoo and Chill podcast on air. Now, back to the show. Our interview begins with a description of the informant. Hyatt describes her as a dark-skinned, elderly, black woman. What stuck out to Hyatt the most were her glasses. She wore inexpensive, dark very dark glasses, he described, with a handkerchief tied around her head. He questioned himself and said, Hmm, I wonder if she's come dressed as if this is how she would present herself to her clients. Again, my belief is that this woman was paid for her information and, you know, it just her even coming to give this interview dressed in her, you know, ritual attire or what she would have worn for her clients just shows how professional she was. She came prepared to work. So she begins her interview with a working on how to create a nation sack for women. Now, this is a two part working. It's a working that she describes that will keep a man with you, okay? Basically to keep him faithful, to break the spirit of infidelity, or if a man has gone away from you and you want him to come back. So before we even get into any of the spells, any of the ritual workings, I do just want to state as a trigger warning that we cannot guarantee you the authenticity nor the success of any of these workings. These are simply for and solely for educational purposes as it relates to the Hoodoo and Chill podcast. Now, back to this working. This is very significant because while the knowledge of nation sacks is out there, very rarely do we hear a lot of people even talking about them. Um, 
you know, I don't even really hear a lot of women in this day and age talking or referring to workings that were specifically and solely only for biological women. Not to take away anything from anyone else, but there were specific workings that were tied to women, biological women, because you had to have a period for it to work. And this is one of those workings. So sit back, relax. We are going to listen to the words and the voice of our interviewer, interviewee, excuse me, as she describes how to do the first part of this working. First, you've got to follow a procedure. You understand? You take a ruler and measure the footsteps, you see. After you measure it with the ruler, you take this string and measure that with the string. Measure that ruler with the string. You tie nine knots in. Then you get a small bag and you put some steel dust in it, which is sold at the drugstore. You put that in the bag. This is if you're doing it for a man. You see, a woman would do it. A woman does this work. She puts that in the bag and ties those nine knots. Then she places it in the bag and ties it around her leg. You know, just below her knee. Which leg? Well, either will do. Which foot track? Either foot track. Yes, either foot track is his foot track. That's to keep him dead at the house. So I'll need everyone to understand that this is a two-part working, okay? So the beginning, the first working that she does involves a foot track. You collect the man's foot track and you measure it with the ruler. So if his foot track was eight inches long or 10, 12, whatever, you would take a piece of string, okay, and, and, and measure that. And you tie it in nine knots. Now, this is done a lot of different ways because I've heard of women taking the string and tying it in nine knots and then wearing it around their waist. But in her work, she describes it as tying it around the leg, either leg, but it has to be below the knee. Okay. So we've talked about links and how important they are. And I'm so glad that she's taking it back to collecting a foot track. Now, I want you to think about the, the, you know, the aesthetic of the terrain of where they're living. Because for her to be able to measure a foot track, obviously it has to be dusty, muddy, or something like that. Now, I want you all, now to be real, you don't have to go find somebody's foot track in the mud to do this work. And you literally could just measure the person's shoe. Okay. But again, this just goes to show you where they were living. This is obviously somewhere in the country or during this time, there were not a lot of paved roads in the area in which she lived. Now, this second part is significant and profound. She describes a second working that she does, but with this working, the link that she uses is the hair. And in his, in his notes, Hyatt says to himself, this is probably because of the phrase from the top of the head to the soles of the feet. And I mean, that shook my soul because I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I don't, I don't do my work like this. I don't, but I thought that this was very, this is powerful. You know, it makes me even rethink some things that I am doing in my work, but she said that she's going to work the entire body, meaning that she's going to collect a link from the foot and she's going to collect a link from the hair, which is the top of the head to the soles of the feet. Very powerful, even in theory. OK, so sit back. Let's hear the next portion of this working. Now, for the next step concerning the hair on the head, it seems to complete the process. Now, for the hair on the head, you can take the hair from the crown of his head and under his arm and down his body. Then you get lodestone, steel dust, 
and you write his name nine times with blue ink. You get blue ink. Cut your paper in the shape of a heart and write the name on it. Well, how do you write the name, that name on a heart? You write that name straight nine times. Just like you cut that heart, well, you write the name in the heart just like this. One right under each other. Exactly. Straight like that. Now, after you write that on the heart, get the lodestone and steel dust and get a piece of cloth. Let it be a piece of linen if you can get it. And shape that linen just like you shape this heart is. Put that low stone steel dust in his name inside that heart you see and close it up. Take a piece of white silk thread and sew all around that heart with it. Sew it just like this. Do you do it towards you? No, no. You work it towards you. Not away from you. You sew it towards you, you see. That's for good. That's for the woman to keep the man with her, you see. Then she takes that and she puts that in her pillow and she can put that in a mattress. Well, there's usually a way that men have almost figured out. Then she takes it and she puts it over the door, you see. Over the seal of the door. But place that heart with the right side up, you see. That's what he has to pass every day, you see, back and forth. That's to make men stay home with her, you see. That's to keep them home. Give them good wishes. Give them a good heart to you, you see. See, that's his heart. She's keeping that heart there with her all the time. Voodoo and Chill Podcast will return after this short ad break. There's a sacrifice that comes with this. And at the end of the day, we're given the choice of how we want to sacrifice and what we're sacrificing for. And whether or not what we're sacrificing for is actually what we're supposed to be sacrificing for. Are we choosing the right path when we accept this proposal? that has this bag attached to it. Are we doing that? Now, for me, this woman is definitely a professional because she, this work is really working a person, okay? She has already worked his foot And then the second part of this working, she collects the hair and she writes it nine times on a piece of paper that she has cut into a heart. She takes a piece of linen. Now, if you were smart, you would be very, very particular in which piece of linen you collect. And this is this is where she didn't give you know, hired all of her secrets because she said a piece of linen, but I know for a fact that you would need to collect something particular for this to be very powerful. And this is what I love about our people that even while they were giving out these interviews, because I know some of you question like, well, why would they give this out? They didn't give out everything. And that's why I think that you also have to find, look at these interviews with a fine tooth chrome. You have to really know to know because some of this stuff in here isn't true. You know, some of it is very true and some of it is not. But even in that phrase right there, she, she, she didn't say a very, something very, very particular, which piece of linen you would need. She also makes another statement about there, you know, the usual way of doing this would be a woman would just keep this in the mattress or keep it under her pillow. But she makes a statement there that you you would have missed it if you didn't know that she was saying that men were catching on to women doing this work, that men were aware of women being able to work them in this way. So she said another way that you could do this was to take that same heart and then to put it over the door seal, you know, for him to walk under it going back and forth. What you're going to find in this woman's work a lot is that she uses a lot of name papers. She definitely uses links, but for the majority of her work, a name paper was used over and over and over again. And I just wanted to point that out because I think a lot of times we're under this impression that writing someone's name in our work is, is weak or it's not as powerful. And that's not true. You know, I do believe that having 
a link of the person to go along with it makes it a lot stronger. However, it's very effective on its own because she uses names papers over and over and over again in this interview. What I also love is how she laid out this work in this interview because she goes right into talking about just as quick as she talked about how to, you know, bring someone to you. She gave Hyatt a working on how to break someone up, which I think is just as important. Like if you, you should, if you should know how to separate just as much as you should know how to bring two people together because both are necessary just depending upon the situation. So let's go into our informants working on how to separate or to split up a couple. Now, to break them up, you break them up. You need to get nine limits. If it's breaking up a separation you're aiming for, pay attention to this part. Get yourself nine limits and gather the names of the couple you want to separate. You know, break up, split them apart. Get those nine lemons and get you some cayenne pepper. And get you some, they call it male lodestone. That's the ruler. Mix that with some legs. Just ask the drugstore for legs. It might look like something, but it's black. It's for bad luck. And mix that with the lemon. And get a box of salt and put that in there. Mix it all together and place it in with those nine lemons in it. Then get a can and arrange all those lemons around it in that can. You know, use a round can. Are you using names in this too? Yes. You have to use the man and the woman's names that you're trying to separate, you see. And the one you want to bring to yourself, that's for the heart, you see. But this is for separation. You use that and you put that in the can. And you put his name in there and you put the woman's and the man's name in there nine times in there. You understand me well? Do you put these names on the same side on the same piece of paper? No. You take one piece of paper and here you put the man's name and you put the woman's name. Now let me show you. You put the woman's name first. Make it nine times in total. See? Make it nine times. One under the other. Then you come right back to it. And you write his name, understand? Nine times, see? And when you take your pencil and you make a cross this way, you see, you cross it just like that. The same pen with the blue ink? No. You use red ink for that. That's for bad luck. And you cross that. Just cross those names, make an X right over it. Yes, you put it down in that can and you put the lid and that cayenne pepper and some gunpowder. Remember that well. Get you some gunpowder. Now, baby, if that don't break them up, honey, I'm going to get out this chair. I'm telling you, you put that in there and you put that on top of those names and you cover up those names. And you let that just stay there. And you put as much pepper as you can. And every day you open it and look at it. And when you start seeing it, the boil, trouble is stirring up. They'll separate. You hear what I'm telling you? You just keep that closed up in that big can. But those nine lemons are in there too. And that pepper. And that pepper gotta go. The Hoodoo and Chill Podcast will return after this short ad break. Why make another major decision without knowing the outcome beforehand? Would you like to know where your relationship is headed? Or what the future holds in store for you? My name is Papa Seer, and I want to assist you in making all the right decisions so that you, yes you, may live your best life. Are you seeking a new career? Does your love life need insight? Or maybe you want to connect with your ancestors or past loved ones. The realm of divination holds all the answers to your fortune. Allow me to use some of my abilities, bone reading, cardamancy, tarot, and mediumship to uncover the answers to your future. Go to hoodooconjurerootwork.com under classes and services to book your appointment today. Your spirit guides are waiting to speak with you. That's hoodooconjurerootwork.com to uncover your destiny today.
Now, if you caught on to this working, truly this is a three-part working. What she's given us is the ritual on how to basically break up two people. And the one that you want, you can make a basically a heart, okay, with their name and, and you know, other things inside of it to keep in your bed or over the door sill for them to walk under. And this will bring this person to you as well as splitting them up from the person that they are with. Another thing that I hope you, that you all caught in her interview, she, she, she brings up her health and her age. I believe this woman, this woman couldn't walk or she might have been bedridden because she made the statement that if this doesn't work, I'll get up out of this chair. Okay. So she was letting you know that this, this was a very, very old, knowledgeable woman. And maybe at this time in her life, her health might not, might may not have been so well. But in other words, you know, just back to this working, she's using nine lemons. And, you know, my belief is that you're going to need to cut those lemons. Um, I truly believe, too, that you don't even need nine whole lemons. You could use nine lemon halves to do this working. And she says a can. Um, but you know very well that you're going to need some type of container that can contain all nine of those lemons or nine lemon halves to, to basically put into this working. Um, I also would believe too, that you might want to squeeze those lemons, some of the juice out of it, um, before you put them in there too, because obviously the juice from the lemons does need to combine with the cayenne pepper, the gum powder and everything else that you're putting into this work. This is probably something I would do outside too. I don't think I would do this into the house. I never use gum powder in the house, whether I'm going to light it or not. Um, I just don't believe in that. Just always be safe, especially if this is something um, I'm not suggesting anyone try this. But again, if you're ever using gum powder, I just, you know, suggest using it outside. But again, um, I just, I love her work. I love her work. I love the details of it. What I took from this the most was the usage of the different colors of ink, right? Um, she was saying how you use blue ink for good luck and you use red ink for bad, for bad luck. And, you know, again, everyone has their own way of doing things because some people have been taught use red ink for everything. Use red ink for love. Use red ink for passion. Use red ink for any spiritual work that you're doing she utilizes blue ink for good luck and if it's worked for her then it works for her that's her way but I just wanted to just you know po point that out because again you will never find two practitioners of this art of this religion of this magic where everything that they do are going to match up in similarity 100% it's not so I love this about this woman. She's very adamant about her way of doing things. We move on over to a working that is for success in business. And it does walk us into usage of the saints. Again, usage of the saints isn't something that we're going to find 100% in every region of the hoodoo conjure work practice, I, as, as I've stated before, we see this a lot more in the Delta region, Alabama, Louisiana, more so where you see the saints being venerated or the saints being incorporated into the work. I love her again because she gives us a really good breakdown on St. Raymond as well as St. Rita, St. Joseph. And she offers us a working of success for your business or your home that involves St. Raymond. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. For luck for the house. Well, you can always use Bay Room. Luck for success, you know, like a person running a business or wanting it to prosper, whatever, then the business is declining or something like that. I'll tell you what to get for that. You get cinnamon, but not the ground cinnamon. You get cinnamon bark, you see, and you get some filet. Like that's filet for use for making gumbo. You get the cinnamon bark. And you get yourself some filet and you get yourself some oil, oil of clover and put that down. Now, 
You get all of that in a bottle, put it all in a bottle, and then you turn around and get you some sugar loaf. They call it sugar loaf. And you get yourself a bottle of honey. You get two bottles of honey because you put one bottle behind the door. That's for a business place, of course. That's for bringing in luck. You take that other bottle of honey and you combine it, all of it, all of the ingredients in a quarter quart bottle, you see? That's the wash the place. You're measuring that, but you have to do that over and over again. But for you, but you'll know that because you'll have that down. You see, you'll have that down. That's the wash the place. That's for prospering. That's for luck and for success. And that's for money. Now, when doing that, you must have a green light going. You see, and you must not be ashamed to burn that light. That's a green light. And you must give to this light. But when you put that light up there, that green light, you have to give a green onion and parsley. Even if there's no more than one green onion and a little parsley, you must have that. That's for bringing in the money. That's for Raymond. That's for Saint Raymond because he's the saint for money. You burn that candle on your mantel place or on the center of a table. If you have a place of business, you can only use one if you want to, but you don't have to have any in there. You can use it right away. You see, because you're using it through your thoughts and you're giving him what he wants. You don't have to have a picture. No, you don't. So this will bring you money. Yes. Do you have to light the candle at any special time or any sort of thing like that? No. You only just you start at 9 in the morning and you burn it from 9 to 10 o'clock. You don't blow it out. You pinch it out. And then you make your wish. At 12 o'clock, you light it again. And you let it burn till 1. And you make your wish again. At 3 in the morning, you light it again. And you let it burn and so forth. And you make your wish. At 6 o'clock is going to be the end of that candle. You burn it again and you make your wish. But you're always going to be wishing for the same thing. And that's money. And that's going to bring success to that place. That's money. That's for St. Raymond. And you know he's going to give you money. All you got to do is just like I'm telling you, honey. Do you hear what I'm telling you? And you'll certainly succeed. You burn that candle and you burn it three times a week. You light that candle on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Those are the days to burn it. You know, St. Raymond is really good. He's the same for money. You don't have to have his picture or anything. You can use him through your thoughts, you know. And whatever you ask him for, you give him parsley. A bunch of parsley, green onions, and light a green candle. And whatever you ask him for, he might make it happen in three days or nine days. You know, you wish. But you give him that parsley, green onion, and you ask him for what you want. And he'll get you what you're asking for him. He's considering giving to you. St. Rita, I like her. She's very good. And she's good for different things. She hardly works too much for men. Unless he's a really good man. If he's a good man, she'll work for him. But if you can tell if he's no good because she won't really do anything for him. She won't do anything for him at all. But she will help you if you mean well. She'll help him. She'll help you earn too. Now St. Joseph, he's what you use him for a wedding. You can use him for a wedding. You, you take St. Joseph and you use him for a wedding. You see, you create a wedding. Like if I want you to marry me, I take a doll and dress her like a bride. Dress that doll like a bride and you dress that guy, you know, like a groom. Get yourself a little cake. Make yourself a cake and set it all up. Set it up like you're setting it on a table. Just put it in a box because you're going to have to. You know, you don't want to move these things sometimes when people come in, you know. You're going to have to have a room to yourself where you can keep those things and nobody can go in that room who can see you, you know. Get yourself a little Bible, a little testament and open that testament right in front of it and keep it set up like that and get St. Joseph. But if you don't have him, you must have his picture or just give him that light and tell him how many days you'll give him the lights and how many days you want this wedding to take place. How many days and how many days you want this wedding to take place? And after this wedding takes place, that will give him whatever you want to promise him. If that wedding doesn't, doesn't take place, I'm not sitting here. Okay? But you must dress them. You must put them together. You must, they must get married, you know? Do you read out of the Bible? No. Just place it in front of him. What color are the candles that you use? White. That's for the wedding. 
So here we are again with more evidence of workers from the 1920s, 30s, utilizing the saints. And I think that we can put to rest that whole argument of, you know, are the saints useful? Did black people use them? Should we be using them? Is there a problem with, you know, incorporating a relationship with the saints? I really think that we can put that to rest now. Um, I believe that with this show in particular, we've showcased, you know, numerous, numerous evidence of the saints being correlated with the hoodoo or black conjure practice. And I love this informant because she did give us a really great breakdown about St. Raymond. We don't hear about St. Raymond a lot. I think we hear about all of, you know, everyone's favorite, St. Peter, St. Expedite. I love the fact that she brought up St. Rita again. This is the second practitioner who's brought up using St. Rita. And again, we have it here where St. Rita has been notated for not necessarily being too fond of men. Personally, I believe if you walk with the divine masculine spirit, I would stay away from St. Rita. I haven't heard anything good involving men in St. Rita. She is a hot saint. So just be very mindful of that and also of women utilizing St. Rita if you have a man in the house or if you're currently in a relationship Personally, I think St. Rita works best for like single mothers, single women, or women of chastity who have taken a vow to, you know, not be with men. But again, this informant, you know, just blesses us with a beautiful plethora of information as it relates to saints and how she utilizes the saints in her black conjure practice. She also brings up altar room etiquette. That brings me back to Madam Collins because Madam Collins, she gave us, you know, a breakdown about utilizing the altar room, what you should wear, how it should look, the things that should be in there. If you haven't read Madam Collins, of course, it is available on the website, hoodooconjurootwork.com. If you haven't listened to the um, podcast, I suggest that you go back a few episodes, listen to that. Because she was another practitioner that emphasized the usage of actually having a room or space dedicated for your work. This is something I would have to highly second and back up because anyone that's taken any of my classes on hoodoo, I always tell everyone my my golden rule for hoodoo is the first two things that you need are time and space. You need time to dedicate to learning. Time to dedicate to the spirit, to yourself, to the ancestors. But most importantly, you need space. You need space. You need sacred or a dedicated space to actually do the work. And here again, we have another practitioner coming through with the confirmation on how important space is needed. And she even said it. You don't want to have your things out in a place where people can bother or disturb your work. I think this is a good time to open up about the fact that her interview is full of dark work. And, you know, for the sake of safety and integrity of this podcast, I didn't choose to elaborate on a lot of her darker workings and to be, you know, fully transparent. Hyatt really shrouds her interview in darkness i think that he emphasizes a lot on of her a lot more of her darker workings um he even showcases her as you know dark woman dark work you know that's how she's showcased even in the book but what i chose to do for this particular interview was to showcase where she chose to give us rituals that was the flip side of her dark work And I think the next ritual is the perfect example of that, whereas she teaches us the uses of graveyard work, but for more benevolent uses. So let's go ahead and get into our informant's ritual for graveyard dirt. If it's a good person who passed away, 
and you go to their grave and get their dirt like it's me. You don't pay for that dirt? No, you don't pay them for that. You see, somebody that you want, like it's a good person who has passed away, and you want something good to be done for me, or you want something good to be done for somebody else, and you're working for that cause, well, you go and get that grave, then get that dirt. You take that dirt and you mix it well. You mix it with some blessed water, you know, holy water from the church, and you dissolve that together. But you must use that steel dust in it. That's drawing, you see. That steel dust that's drawing. You mix that up and you take your sugar loaf and brown sugar. You must have that brown sugar for that. You see, that's the good spirit. And it must be brown sugar. You get yourself a nickel's worth of ginger snaps. Little brown ginger snaps. You dissolve that into the mixture. Now, whatever you're asking for, you take that graveyard dirt wherever I'm at. And if it's me that you want to connect to, you know, you want me to be drawn to you, you're asking that good spirit, that good graveyard dirt, you see, you do good for you with me, to help me with that work, with the situation, to help you out with me. You put that around where I'm at, you see, and every time I cross over that, my thoughts go to you. That draws my mind to you. That draws me right to you. You see, every time I cross over it, but I come to you with a good mind, you see. This was truly my favorite working. It was truly my favorite working. Now, there are a few things with this ritual that I don't necessarily agreement, agree with. Her theory on not paying for dirt from a graveyard. Now, I didn't get into the full working of this, but I will say this. She elaborates more on this in the inter interview. She basically says that when you collect graveyard dirt, the person's grave is most significant. And if you're trying to do something of ill intent, you would want to collect graveyard dirt from a person who had a bad death or a traumatic death. And if you wanted to collect for something good, you would collect graveyard dirt from a grave of a good person someone who was you know good on earth a good person and she says that you pay for the graveyard dirt from an evil person so they won't bother you but if it's a good person you don't have to pay them for it because you're going to do good things with it that's her theory on it i don't necessarily agree with that i think anytime you go into a graveyard you need to leave something um you know so that's up to each in, in his own and how you choose to do things in your own respective way but for me i can really appreciate the diversity of hoodoo so much i can appreciate you know this practitioner just being so adamant in her way working and just her offering up her knowledge and also just giving us some counteracting rituals you know, because I think a lot of times hoodoo is so shrouded in the darkness and I really try my best to provide balance on this podcast. Whenever we're discussing rituals, I don't want this to be a podcast where every time you turn it on and every time you listen to hoodoo voices, we're only talking about how to hurt people and how to harm people. I think that hoodoo has had a bad rep for too long and it's important on, it's important in my opinion, to show a different face or a different light as it relates to these practitioners. I think this is a good stopping point here. And in the description of this podcast, I will post a link so that, you know, you can read this interview at, in its entirety at your own leisure. I only ask that you please support the podcast by following us, whether you're on Apple, Spotify, whatever respective platform that you're using please family and friends leave us a five star rating comments you know if you know on spotify where it asks you if you want to leave a comment on the show that helps us a lot um leaving a rating on apple that helps us more than what you can more than what you believe that really does help us a lot you know um youtube as well following us and things of that nature these things are free they don't cost you a dime and it helps keep us on air it helps take our podcast to the next level because who doing chill? We aren't going anywhere. 
we're going to continue to push out this content we're going to continue to make you think and we are going to continue to research and break barriers as it relates to our respective practice as it relates to the hoodoo conjure root work tradition so with that being said family thank you all so much for listening to another episode of the hoodoo and chill podcast and as always family and friends i am wishing you love light peace prosperity abundance okay may all the roads may all the doors open up for you today may you walk in the best light take care of your ancestors take care of yourself take care of your mental health take care of your loved ones take care of all things around you but i ask for spirit to take care of you as well i ask for spirit to open up doors for you i ask for you to have an encounter with your spirit guides this week okay remember my people you are the best of the best your bloodline is divine okay i send you out in love light peace most importantly protection i bless your hands may the things you touch may they materialize as if they were gold my people and with that i release you into the atmosphere thanks for listening to the hoodoo and chill podcast be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts Leave us a five-star rating and let us know how much you enjoyed the show. As always, donations of love keep our podcast alive and give us the ability to enhance our content. Please use one of the donation links in the description to send a donation of love today. And we'll see you on the next episode of Hoodoo and Chill.